Hi everyone, I'm Zan from Felton Fair, and welcome to another behind the scenes video as we show you how to weather and antique leather armor. Uh, now, what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be showing you how to take an off the shelf piece of leather armor and just beat it up, make it look battle damaged, so that whenever uh, you go to a, whether you're working on a film, you have a cosplay, you're going to a LARP event, uh, you can have gear that looks like it's been used and didn't just come off the shelf from somewhere. So today we have a piece, uh, this is actually uh, an epic armory piece of leather armor. Uh, the link will be in the description. Uh, we're also gonna have a link of the tools and materials we use in the description. So take a look at those and we'll jump right in. Now the principle with any sort of weathering and battle damage is we're going to want to add dirt and grime to the low places where uh, dirt and grime would be caught in normal wear. And then we're gonna to wanna to add battle damage uh, to the raised portions because that's where uh, what would receive the blows and the sword cuts and that sort of stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna start off with some fine grit sandpaper. This is 180 grit sandpaper. And we're actually just gonna go in to some of these lower areas and just kind of use that sandpaper to uh, knock off a little bit of the finish just so that our uh, our weathering and stuff will actually uh, kind of absorb into the leather a little better. So that's what we're going to do first. Now that we've worn down all the areas that would have dirt or grime, we're actually going to take a knife. Now you can use a kitchen knife, um, a, some sort of medieval uh, weapon or something. Uh, just something with a thick enough blade, more than a scalpel, just so that it'll actually make noticeable dents and cuts in, uh, in your uh, piece of equipment. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go through here and basically we're simulating uh, the battle damage, sword cuts, that sort of stuff. Now obviously always be safe and careful when using real weapons. Make sure you're, if you're stabbing, drawing, cutting, do it away from you because you wanna make sure that you know even if it slips, you don't cut yourself or hurt yourself. You also wanna be careful, you don't wanna hit any of the stitching because if you were to do that, uh, it could potentially come unraveled and undone and that's not something you want to have. Now, once again, this is the first layer. We are going to do multiple, uh, we're going to do a second uh, group of cuts after, uh, but for this one, we want the weathering, uh, the, the black and the grit and that sort of stuff to kind of get caught in these. So we want them to really show up. So uh, we're kind of okay with the, the weathering stuff uh, getting all kind of gooped up in here. So that's actually what we're, what we're doing this for. So you can see I've now got a bunch of cuts they're in the bracer. All right, for this next section, I'm going to be wearing latex gloves because after years of showing up to social events with brown stained hands, uh, that was kind of awkward having to explain why uh, my hands were all mottled colors. Uh, but uh, this leather stain will, um, will stain your skin, so I recommend wearing gloves. But we're gonna be using this, it's called antiquing gel, and we're gonna be using that next, and we're going to be applying it to the bracer. So I'll now take a soft brush with some slightly diluted antiquing gel on it, I'm just gonna start going along the, uh, anywhere where dirt and grime would collect, and just kind of applying it there. Once again, down here in our, um, our recess, add some depth there, some, some dimension. We'll also make sure we hit uh, any of these scars and markings we made with our knife earlier, because we want it to collect down in there so those will show up nicely. And then of course it would collect around these, uh, this lacing here. So obviously dirt and stuff wouldn't be removed from under those. So we'll just apply it there and then along other areas like this. Now, when you're done, you just take a clean paper towel and you can just kind of buff it. And that kind of smooths out the, it gets it from areas that would normally be cleared and, and it would brush off of. It also helps you have any of those really clear, distinct lines. You can see um, there's still some remaining here, still some down here, and that gives you the beginning of your, your darker layers. You can now see where we've got all the dark uh, kind of collected and all those crevices. So we're gonna go on to our next step of using some black paint just to add one more layer of depth in those final crevices. Now, while usually for antiquing and weathering, we want to use a flat black, I'm gonna actually be using a gloss black acrylic paint for this uh, because you want, uh, with oily, greasy kind of dirt, you want there to be a kind of a shine to it. So that's why we're going to be using the uh, gloss black instead of a flat black to add these, uh, these final little details. So we'll just get a little bit of our black paint. And once again, in the same place, just a little uh, more judiciously, not quite as broadly, we're going to add in those, uh, 
those little uh, weather weathering sections. Once again, we're just trying to uh, we're trying to uh, increase the, the perceived depth of each piece of the armor. Another great place is you can see along these knuckles here, uh, dirt would collect in there, so we can just add a little bit of that uh, that black. You can also kind of mix and dilute the black with the antiquing gel. Also, if you don't have antiquing gel with you, other sorts of leather dyes and stains work as well, uh, or sometimes just even uh, paint itself will do absolutely fine. So all of those are really good options. You just want something that is going to simulate, you know, the places that are, are uh, a high probability of dirt collecting and that sort of stuff is kind of what you uh, you want to get some sort of dark dirt grime all stuck in there. Here you can see the contrast between what the weathered uh, piece looks like and what the unweathered piece. You can see how much lighter the right one is. Um, you can also see how we've got the dark and the crevices. Here you can see the difference in the knuckles. So in addition to weathering, I'm actually going to do one slight modification to this as well. Uh, I'm going to cut a section right here because uh, we want greater flexibility to move our hand. You can see you don't have a ton of flexibility here, and I like a lot of flexibility when I fight, so I'm actually gonna just take this scalpel, I'm gonna cut right through here. Now, this still is attached to your thumb, so it'll keep it down that way, but now you can see we have much greater flexibility there in the wrist. I'm just gonna kind of trim off the excess, and then you don't wanna leave these kind of open uh, raw leather here. So we can go back to our weathering brush. Just use those to kind of touch up that, that raw leather. So now that we have finished our low lights on our uh, bracer here, we're actually going to go in with some rough grit sandpaper. So this is 80 grit sandpaper. And we're gonna go in and we're gonna start doing some highlights. So what we're doing is we're adding scuff marks, uh, kind of beating it up because if any of you have ever, you know, run around, fought with this sort of stuff, you know how, you know, any, anytime you, you run up against something, uh, it's going to knock off a little bit of the, the patina, knock off, you're just going to just mark up the, uh, the leather just a little bit. You don't want to overdo it, you don't want to make it look like it's been rubbed with sandpaper, uh, but you do want to do enough so that uh, you can actually see definite highlights. A way to do it is put it on the side like this and just strike it really hard in one way that will make it look like a scuff. Uh, you want to do edges, highlights, anywhere that would naturally be, uh, be prone to scuffing, prone to any sort of abrasion. Then we can come back in with our knife weapon, whatever tool you're going to be using, and we're going to do some more cuts. These we're not going to fill with the dark, so these will look like fresher cuts, something that's happened a little more recently. And we're going to just add some, some dings and marks once again, being careful not to hit the stitching because we don't want anything to fall apart with us. Now, if you wanted to make a kind of broken and then repaired uh, gauntlet look, you could do that. And what you would just need to do is you would need to uh, cut the stitching with a knife and then go back in maybe with some slightly different colored thread and restitch it, which would actually add a nice and cool uh, kind of repaired effect because obviously, when something broke, people wouldn't just throw it away. They would actually go back and, and fix it. They would have the skills or they would find the person with the skills to be able to keep their equipment running. So now you can see all my highlights are complete. And we'll, uh, we'll show you another side by side. Here is another side by side of the two pieces. Now you'll notice there's one section that doesn't have much weathering to show and that's the black on the edge. So we're actually gonna go in with a brush and some light colored paint and add some scuffs and marks there as well. So here we have some light colored paint on our brush and we're just gonna hit the black just a little bit. You can always just tone it down with your finger. You don't want it to be, be too bright. But what we're doing here is we're just adding some kind of scratches and abrasions to the black so that it will have a little bit of definition as well. It won't just be a plain dark piece. It'll have a little bit of texture. If you don't want to beat up your uh, your gauntlet as well, you can also use this on the leather to add additional highlights and stuff. You can do that without compromising the structural uh, integrity of your bracer by beating it up with sandpaper and real weapons. All right, everyone, that is it. There is your side-by-side -side comparison. You can kind of see the difference in 
the, uh, the battle damage, the weathering. Uh, you can also see the flexibility damage that, that difference that that one little uh, that one little cut made in your ability to fight and uh, be able to use your sword and employ your weapon on the battlefield. Once again, these techniques work for anything from armor, belts, that sort of stuff. So anything that's made out of leather this is a great way to antique and weather them and just add your own little flair, your own little uh, look to it uh, as well as make it look worn and well used. You can like, comment, subscribe, check these out on Epic Armory. Uh, you can see a link or a uh, list in the description of everything that we use for today. Now I just need six infinity stones to stick in this puppy and I can go snap my fingers. See y'all later.